I've spent so much time here at Moundville. It's almost like a second home. It's such a feeling you get when you're here. And when I'm here, I'm inspired to do artwork. I'm Mary Smith. I live in Bixby, Oklahoma. I'm a tribal member of the Muscogee Nation, and I live on the reservation. Mary approached me wanting to spend more time at Moundville. It's a place that brings her a lot of creative energy for progressing and learning more and educating others. So she mentioned that she would like to stay for an extended amount of time. So I started working on grants with our director, Clay Nelson. We got the grant, and from there on, the Muscogee Nation of Oklahoma was a part of the process. So all along the way, they chose Nancy as our apprentice. So the entire project was collaborative in nature. So they asked me if I wanted to come and I was like sure and they said well you have to be gone a month. I said sure. <laughs> so I came you know and I was like how has this been handed to me on a silver platter? We had done classes before so I kind of knew her before we came out. I had gone to a class that Mary had with the Cultural Preservation Office and they were supposed to do a set of four baskets and that's how I met Mary. And we did too, and then COVID hit, and so we didn't get to finish the project, but I really like doing it. We're kind of the same age. I'm a little older, so we had that in common, and she's just a great person. I honestly thought that's what Mary did was just baskets. I did not know that she did everything else so many things. When it came to the process of how to develop the programming for the entire month, we really just relied on Mary. What do you want to do? And really the point of that, that grant and to get Mary out here was not necessarily for the educational programming that we have, but also for her to have a space to where she can come work on her project. And the point of Nancy being there was for her to pass that knowledge on to Nancy. We were here 24 hours a day. We had access to the park anytime we wanted it. For Thanksgiving, we were here and I did a fast from midnight to midnight, which was really special because nobody was here, the park was closed and it was just such a special place that day. I was fasting for my ancestors and I felt like they were here with me. Just being able to see Moundville, see the park, see the river, see the museum. We did mat weaving, basket making, corn hustle making, pottery. The demonstration days allowed her to just communicate with the public and not necessarily in a rigid class format. She was able to be here and just answer questions. So we had several school groups that would come through on a field trip. One on the normal day, you know, they come to the museum, they get a huge educational value from touring the museum, but then they got to come in and talk to Mary, who is a master weaver with the Muscogee Nation. So that was a huge educational value for students that came to the park during the month of November. We did a school outreach program and we did some model magic clay and just casually in between the classes Miss Mary had just made a clay turtle and all the kids were just obsessed with it and then they made their own and it was just great to see that through thousands of years people are using pottery in kind of the same way. Everyone was really nice you know and they they really were eager to learn and everyone at the end of all the classes everyone had made what they came to make. So the whole point in the program itself was to have a place for a descendant community artist to come and work on whatever they wanted to work on. So we had a lot of downtime, even though we had a lot of programming and that time was just for her. What do you want to do? And her goal was she wanted to work on a project and her project that she chose was a skirt. Part of the agreement was we just would like to have a certain allotment of time that we can have it on display to show people what you worked on here. But she said that she wanted to donate it permanently into the collections here at Moundville. So a lot of what we did here was out of the graciousness of Mary and her love for Moundville. And that's something that we're learning the more we work with descendant communities is that their love for Moundville makes our programming and our museum so much stronger because they want to contribute. So anyone that's been to the Jones Archaeological Museum um, will know that Mary has already had a big stake in doing the feather cloak. So now we have another piece of Mary here. The skirt was made out of hemp which the hemp was furnished to me by Monica Newman Moore. We also used shells from the Cahaba River. We were taken out and got to collect those. One of the places and the relationships that I really wanted to foster for Mary was with the Cahaba River and the Cahaba River Keeper because that is a river that flows through most of traditional Muscogee Nation homeland. Then we had Bill Skinner and he hand hammered out the copper coils 
We had deer toes and I couldn't have done without everyone helping. She made this whole site her community for the whole month. It's, it's just a very loving program because it was all of Mary's love for her community being passed on to us. Imagine 800 years ago, people, women were here making things like this all the time. And we don't always have that in our archeological record, but we do have the living descendants of these people. And she graced us with her presence and then brought all of this knowledge here to build a skirt that took a month and has tons and tons of hours of work in it, but also thousands of years of cultural knowledge imbued in it. And now we have the honor of displaying that here and learning from it. This is a site that is built by the descendants of the Native American communities who we still work with very closely at Mound Bill today and are still a really big part of how we're progressing to learn about the past and the future and how those histories are intersecting to teach us more about Mound Bill. So by having this month to where the educators around the state can focus on Native American history allows us to have a stage to amplify Native voices. It provides a more holistic educational outreach opportunity for the state and for teachers and so it really puts Mountville on the map as being a key point in Alabama's history. We worked really hard on this grant with Mary and we were able to work with the Alabama State Council of the Arts who was incredibly supportive of this program. They are the reason that we were able to accomplish these goals. There's only so much planning that you can do and so much motivation you can have if you don't have the funds or the resources to do it. So Alabama State Council of the Arts was a wonderful supporter of this program as well as the Division of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion with the University of Alabama. Without the both of them, this program could not have taken place so a huge thank you to them for their support of this program, as well as UA Museums and all of the staff here at the park that help us make these programs work so well. And then the community and who shows up. And we had people that came every single weekend to these classes and exchanged information with Mary and Nancy and now they're new friends. And so a huge thank you to the community for welcoming them so warmly and making them have such a wonderful time.